Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, sitting down to talk about the Microsoft versus FTC court case once more, and we're eating good. I mean, they are delivering the goods right now. Lots of tea being spilled, but in particular, a lot of today's news has to deal with Xbox and PlayStation, where PlayStation really doesn't seem as opposed to Call of Duty exclusivity as we had seen in the past year or so. Xbox is waving the white flag a bit when it comes to the console wars internally, and even we get an idea at potential purchasing targets for Xbox, and that gives us additional insight as to where they'll look in the future. We have so much to get into today. If you're new here, you're into Xbox news, information, conversations, you're in the right place, consider subscribing. Where to begin? I mean, we have the pick of the litter here, but I wanna start with our boy, Jim Ryan, all right? Jim Ryan, we all know, was one of the most vocally opposed figures when it came to the Xbox Activision deal. Naturally so, head of PlayStation. PlayStation had marketing deals with Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a mammoth. It generates revenue like it's nobody's business. It's the biggest game in the console industry. So no doubt, you want to hold on to that for dear life. Now, one topic that we got into a lot when the deal was first, first announced is, would Xbox make Call of Duty exclusive? I will take my L and I said for a while that I think that Xbox would have made Call of Duty exclusive. But with that in mind, I thought that because they need to strengthen their brand and this is one surefire way to do that, especially when there was a lot of, I remember the 360 days, you were not playing Call of Duty on your PlayStation 3 unless you wanted to get Prestige 10 once again on a different account, which uh, guilty is charged with a number of Call of Duty games. I was obsessed back then. However, that's obviously sounding like it's not going to be the case. Xbox has confirmed multiple times we'll continue to ship Call of Duty on PlayStation. But when you read what Jim Ryan had to say initially about not only the deal, but Call of Duty exclusivity, it's very telling what the real motive was here. Something that myself and other Xbox commentators have said before we talked about on Defining Duke. So let's read the fine print and then discuss. It begins with a pure Xbox article that reads, However, in a Microsoft FTC trial update, a private email from PlayStation boss Jim Ryan to former SCEE president Chris Deering, quoted during the hearing, reveals the gaming division head seemingly had no real concerns about the multiplayer-driven FPS series becoming exclusive. In the email, which was dated January 20th, 2022, Ryan mentioned how the deal wasn't about exclusivity and he felt Microsoft was thinking bigger than that. He then went on to suggest that Call of Duty would likely remain on PlayStation for years to come. Here's exactly what he said, quote, It is not an exclusivity play at all. They're thinking bigger than that, and they have the cash to make moves like this. I spent a fair amount of time with Spencer and Kodak, and I'm pretty sure we will continue to see Call of Duty on PlayStation for years to come. We have some good stuff cooking. I'm not complacent. I'd rather this doesn't happen, but we'll be okay. We'll be more then okay okay so uh wow i mean when you think about the entire arc of mudslinging between xbox and playstation over this call of duty exclusivity and what was said when the deal was initially struck this clearly spells out what a lot of us have been saying which is that playstation saw a chance to wring xbox dry and they did I think Xbox, if they could get away with it, would have made Call of Duty their own thing moving forward. I 100% think Warzone would have been multi-plat and every new entry for Call of Duty would have been exclusive if they could get away with it. But in the spirit of fair competition, according to various regulatory bodies, this was something that should have been addressed. The CMA, funny enough, the one who obstructed the deal most recently in April, actually changed their position and didn't feel PlayStation would be in trouble at all without that type of exclusivity if Xbox were to make Call of Duty exclusive. So it's funny how everything's twisting and turning here, but PlayStation seemed to be okay with it at the end of the day. And so they did exactly what we said they were gonna do and just saw what they could get out of Xbox. Hence why I think it's very telling that when the FTC injunction hearing has begun, that Jim Ryan, the biggest opposer of the deal alongside PlayStation, showed up in a video call. But meanwhile, he was getting on every plane to Brussels, to talk to all these various regulatory bodies about the harm this deal could do to the industry and how PlayStation simply couldn't survive. And make no mistake, Xbox has a victim mentality in this as well, because it goes down to politics at the end of the day. So PlayStation was kind of cool with Call of Duty exclusivity from the rip. And as we've said for a while, they'd always be okay. Many fans would disagree. No, they would definitely go out of business. No, they would not.
But Jim Ryan kind of changing his tune isn't the craziest we have here as we learn that Microsoft was considering to acquire both Bungie and Sega to bolster Xbox Game Pass according to this internal email shown on screen here. And this is nuts because over on Defining Duke, if you listen, you already heard us wax poetic on how we think Sega would be a great fit for Microsoft. And the reason we said that is because Microsoft needs Japanese support big time and Sega I think is the ideal partner the history's been there since the very beginning of Xbox with really the original Xbox being the spiritual successor to the Sega Dreamcast which naturally went up in flames even though it had a great library not only that but you look at their current support now of Game Pass Persona 3 Reload Persona 5 Tactica Day 1 and Game Pass Football Manager made it to Game Pass, which is actually, sneakily, one of the biggest IP underneath Sega and one of their best-selling products. Of course, there's also things like Yakuza making its way to Game Pass and becoming a real face of the Xbox players in Japan and becoming a really big component of Xbox's Japanese support as it was just in the last showcase. It just all comes together and makes sense as well because Sega has good Western support too. Not only when you look at their Japanese franchises that have been marketed well here in the West, but it's really the fact that Sega has an appeal in the West thanks to Sonic, which cannot be understated with how he has had a tremendous resurgence. So having all that under their belt, plus some of the mobile properties you get from them, I mean, it just makes even more sense now with them buying the Angry Bird developer, Rovio. It just, I think this is one that's still going to happen. It's only a matter of time. And it's a little bit vindicating to see, oh, they were actually looking at them. But that's not it. We see all these lists online of, hey, you know, this is who Xbox is looking to buy. Here's their actual mergers and acquisition final watch list. And it's listed as Thunderful, Supergiant Games, Niantic, Playrix, Zynga. We'll talk about them in a moment. Bungie, IO Interactive, and Scopely. I just, again, cannot wrap my head around some of these. Supergiant Games is such a great team, but I imagine they want to stay independent. I couldn't see them being acquired unless they get a huge bag. Thunderful is kind of interesting timing with 33 Immortals being a big premiere game for them. They showed it a ton at the Xbox Showcase Extended as well. So you can see there's a little bit of a partnership there. But a lot of these targeting mobile, Niantic, Zynga. Again, we'll talk about Zynga in a little bit because that's a whole other story. But yeah, Xbox is eyeing down a ton of companies, and we already know it doesn't end after Activision. So this is kind of telling on where they may go. Obviously, Bungie is off the board. IO Interactive, though, developer of Hitman. I mean, I loved Hitman 3. That was my game of the year that year. I just another great team. We heard about Project Dragon, potentially. There's also the 007 game coming from them. So just really interesting picks here. And th this, to me, is the most exciting component of the conversation because we never get a look at this type of stuff so really awesome to see but now let's talk a bit about zynga how about purchasing targets we know xbox is in acquisition mode and according to this article here microsoft says it looked at acquiring zynga but opted to go bigger with activision microsoft gaming ceo phil spencer testified in san francisco on friday that the company previously opened up talks with mobile game developer zynga but ended up not consummating a deal a lot of respect for the people at zynga and what they built that's such a phil spencer line in the end for our opportunity we thought we needed to have something that was even bigger than what zynga was given our very small starting space in the mobile gaming business. Spencer didn't say when Microsoft was in talks with Zynga and the company wouldn't provide further comment. However, Zynga said in a filing last year that executives met in 2021 of September with representatives from an unnamed strategic acquirer, which expressed non-specific interest in an acquisition of Zynga. And funny enough, a year before that, in September of 2020, was when Bethesda was purchased. So Zynga, this is a company that was purchased by Take-Two shortly thereafter. At the time, it was the biggest acquisition in gaming. But then Xbox came in right after and got on the phone with Activision in November. And we know what happened. They've now announced the intent to acquire Activision Blizzard. This makes a lot of sense. And it's the, the tough pill to swallow for a lot of Xbox fans that we've gradually learned over time with various comments. Xbox has slowly spelled it out to us. At first, I was right there with all of you. I was very excited about the dead IP that could be revived. I thought of the Call of Duty Workshop and the great developers that are stuck just churning out Call of Duty that originally worked on games like 
prototype and singularity and all these fun unique games now we're stuck making call of duty i thought of xbox being the saving grace tony hawk coming back call of duty you know being maybe an exclusive and so on and so forth right we all went through that phase and i think some of that is still possible the revival of potential ip but i'm not holding my breath right now given how xbox is handling currently i believe resting ip with bethesda i think of series like elder scrolls and fallout which are in desperate need of a little shot in the arm beyond their current existing live service games eso and 76 and we have no updates whatsoever on if xbox plans to remedy that so i'm not holding my breath that when they get an even bigger company in activision that they're going to manage that portfolio well which is one of my critiques of xbox and their acquisitions the reality is the deal was made because call of duty game pass huge surge annually there and then the K in ABK that everyone ignores, King. Everyone does not talk about Candy Crush and King, and I get it because not a sexy game, not fun for the YouTube conversation, not fun for the YouTube comments. I get all of that, but it is one of, if not the biggest mobile game. And when you get that, you suddenly go from small player in the mobile market to major player in the mobile market, which is why I said, Xbox is probably loving that a lot of the conversation is around exclusivity because they're about to make a massive leap in a particular department from small player to major competitor overnight when the deal goes through. So for them to want to go for Zynga makes a lot of sense. Zynga, mobile games, free to play games, monetized products. This is where Xbox wants to go because as we just covered, they're looking at games, accessories as the way they're gonna make up ground. And so Activision really does make a lot of sense in that you address Game Pass, you address the mobile hole in the wall. I mean, there's a lot here for them that does get fixed up, which were clear weaknesses for them that now on top of just Game Pass getting a ton of products in it, uh, you also have major weaknesses being addressed. But Microsoft, as I mentioned, victim mentality of their own, admits that Xbox has lost the console war as it battles for a $69 billion Activision Blizzard buyout. In its proposed findings of facts submitted on the first day of Microsoft's court battle with the FTC over the $69 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard, Microsoft has claimed Xbox has officially lost the console wars. A section of the document submitted by Microsoft describes its entry into the gaming industry in 2001 when its original Xbox console was outsold by both Sony and Nintendo by a significant margin and per Xbox, it hasn't stopped losing the console wars ever since. Xbox's console has consistently ranked third of three behind PlayStation and Nintendo sales. In 2021, Xbox had a share of 16%, while Nintendo and PlayStation had shares of Redacted and Redacted, respectively. Likewise, for console revenue and shares of consoles currently in use by gamers, the installed base, Xbox trails with 21%, while PlayStation and Nintendo have shares of Redacted and Redacted, respectively. Microsoft goes on to argue that as a result, it is betting on a different strategy by generating profit through game sales rather than console sales and selling its consoles at a loss, effectively subsidizing gamers' purchase of the hardware in hopes of making up the revenue through sales of games and accessories. This would be a lot more juicy if we could get an idea of where Nintendo and where PlayStation lie in this whole entire scenario like what percentage do each of them have but xbox is firmly saying from the get-go we've been losing now i do wonder a bit about the 360 generation and if that's a loss with an asterisk because xbox did stop producing their 360s and playstation did catch up by the way because they had fantastic games like the last of us they did catch up and i think eventually surpassed xbox but xbox did stop printing 360s so i wonder if they technically won that generation but they said we've been losing ever since again for arguments towards the ftc to make sure they look like the victim here because the more they look like the victim the more they look weaker in an industry where they're actually quite powerful the more of a chance they have of getting this deal through. Again, it comes down to politics, perspective, working your angle the best you can. So Xbox is losing, but it's funny because one thing that we covered on Defining Duke is that Phil came out and talked about how a lot of people in the room following the showcase were really big on the Xbox 360 calling it the heyday, but that Xbox is making twice as much revenue now compared to then. So 
you know, it's one of those things where as a commentator in the industry, I'm like, which is it guys? Are we losing or are we winning here? Uh, I think they're losing the overall console war, but Microsoft Xbox as a company does extremely well which are two very different things here. So again, I think it's just about them working their angle here and seeing what they can get away with. But anyway, let's talk about PlayStation once more to wrap things up because apparently Sony does not want to share info with Activision if this deal goes through. And I'm curious about the implications on the future of video games coming from Activision if this is the case. So let's get to reading this GameSpot article, which is titled, Sony won't share PS6 info with Activision if Microsoft deal goes through. This comes by way of a deposition regarding Microsoft's potential acquisition of Activision Blizzard, in which Sony Interactive Entertainment President Jim Ryan made this comment to the US Federal Trade Commission. An excerpt of the deposition, which was obtained by Axios, is from April 6th, and includes comments from Jim Ryan expressing his concerns over a potential acquisition. When asked why SIE would no longer share confidential details about its next console and development once Microsoft acquired Activision, Ryan said, We simply could not run the risk of a company that was owned by a direct competitor having access to that information. Further in the deposition, Ryan is asked about Microsoft's acquisition of Mojang, the developer of Minecraft. Much of this portion of the deposition is redacted, so it's not totally clear, but it seems like Ryan's points to working with Microsoft's own Mojang is a similar concern should Activision be acquired as well. This does not mean what I think a lot of people immediately think it's going to mean like, oh, then certainly we're not going to see Call of Duty on PlayStation just by nature of them not sharing details about the PlayStation 6. Um, I don't think that's going to necessarily be the case, but I do wonder about optimized versions, like your next gen versions and whatnot. Because for example, we have Minecraft Legends, which just came out and that's on PlayStation, that's on Switch even. Um, but with the PlayStation 6 moving forward, let's say because these consoles typically launch in the holiday period, at least for the last two generations between PlayStation and Xbox they have, they launch in that holiday window. Okay, guess what also launches in that window? Call of Duty. Obviously Xbox, if they're launching a console, wants to have Call of Duty Day 1 Game Pass on that new console. And if you're not giving them any SKUs for the PS6, any details for the PS6, can they develop for that product? I typically lean into my game development knowledge, but I have yet to get this far. So frankly, I don't know, but I find it, I find myself hard pressed to imagine that this is something that after all this arguing and how Xbox will never ever skip PlayStation with Call of Duty, that this would lead by PlayStation's decision to Xbox not bringing Call of Duty to the platform. I don't think it'll turn out that way because I think of what happened with Minecraft where Minecraft doesn't have a next-gen optimized version for PlayStation. It's just the PS4 version on PS5. That's probably what will happen is they'll make a SKU based on the PS5 and have to bring a maybe PS6 update later. I'm just spitballing here, but that's my read of the situation. Ultimately, very interesting though because this is one step further beyond what we've discussed of like, okay, if this deal goes through, what changes in the relationship? And it seems pretty dramatic, the change. So we'll see. The court case continues on. I'm sure we'll discuss much, much more in the meantime. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, take excellent care of yourselves. Let me know what you're thinking of all of this in the comments down below. Other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.